Joining us to talk about the investment landscape in both India and China is Rushir Sharma, chairman of Rockefeller International. Rushir, welcome. So we're also at this moment where India is officially passing China in population, and the youth population of India is going to have this boom uh, demographically over the next several years. How should investors think about playing uh, that that bet on that booming uh, economic opportunity outside of just ETFs? Right. I think that, uh, in fact, this is a great time to be investing outside of ETFs. Uh, but I'm also keeping in mind uh, that um, even though the Indian economy is still about one-fourth the size of the Chinese economy, the Indian stock market uh, is much bigger uh, in terms of as a share of the Indian economy and has delivered great returns, uh, even compared to the S&P 500, over the last couple of decades. So from a stock allocator standpoint, India has definitely been the better market to allocate capital. Uh, and the company creation there is very impressive. The number of companies there which have doubled or tripled in dollar terms over the last decade as a share of the overall market is the highest of any country in the world. Uh, so this is a great place for stock pickers. And uh, just buying the ETF or India index is really something which is limiting because there are so many compounders in that market. Are the rules of the road relatively clearer than with China? You know, we, we go from is China, are, are Chinese stocks investable or not based on, uh, you know, how she and, and the Communist Party over there are treating things. Now, there are some concerns, as Seema mentioned, that uh, corporate executives are raising with Modi here this week. But are they the level of concern that should give investors pause at all? Well, I think it's great that these uh, CEOs, if they have a frank chat with uh, the Indian prime minister about some of this, because there are issues in India. Uh, one of the issues I've spoken about as far as India is concerned is that the regulatory agencies out there or the investigative agencies, the tax authorities tend to be overzealous. Uh, and India really needs to think about how China used to be a decade ago, uh, because Remember, like uh, before Xi Jinping came to power, China was also a great place for wealth creation. A lot of companies got created there, and you had the Tencent and the Alibabas that came out. But I think what's happened in China over the last few years is both a distrust of the kind of capitalism that was being practiced in China and also the demographics that you alluded to earlier. So there's a lot more that India can do to make the environment more conducive. But that doesn't take away from the fact that India has already been a great uh, place for wealth creation over the last couple of decades. Yeah, Rashir, I mean, the last time you were on with us, uh, you were talking about boomy talk about the Chinese economy being a charade. So I want to give a hat tip to you, because obviously now we're seeing disappointing data come out of China right now. We're starting to see some stimulus measures. And one of the other things we're starting to see is investors maybe rotate out of some of those Chinese investments into other Asian markets like India, but also, as Larry Fink at BlackRock uh, has pointed out in the last 24 hours, Japan as well, uh, as, as investors continue to want their Asian exposure. Just want to get your thoughts on that dynamic and looking across these different markets, um, where those compelling opportunities are. Well, lots of places, because if you look at the dollar returns for EMX China even this year, it's close to 10%. Uh, so you have many emerging markets that have delivered very strong returns. And there are many countries, in fact, not just India, that are benefiting from the U.S.-China Cold War going on out there. There's Indonesia. There's Vietnam. Uh, there are even countries such as Philippines, Thailand. So I think there are lots of countries benefiting from that. And so I would strongly recommend, I think that the single best investment opportunity out there in the world is in emerging markets ex-China. Uh, in Eastern Europe, we have seen markets like Poland uh, boom. In Latin America, Mexico is finally benefiting from uh, the nearshoring boom, a promise that it's held for a long period of time. So a whole host of emerging markets are doing quite well. Many of them have generated dollar returns in the double digits this year, comparable to what the S&P 500 is doing. Uh, even though the S&P has done very well because of the big tech names, there the um, gains have been more broad-based. So I think that there's plenty of opportunity, and I'm glad that people and investors are now looking beyond China because there was far too much obsession with 
this one big market in the emerging market world at least over the last decade.